podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey everyone, uh, this is Francois from Inmobi. Uh, today we'll be talking about mobile conversion tracking. Uh, if you have any questions, please type them in the Q&A box. And my colleague Andy, who is also on the line, will, uh, will be asking them for you during the Q&A sessions. We'll have one Q&A session in the middle of the presentation and one at the end of the presentation. And overall, for, I mean, it should be about one hour session total. Uh, if you need to drop off for any reasons, uh, the presentation will be recorded uh, and we'll be sending you the link uh, in the next couple of days. So by Monday, you should have, uh, you should have the link to that presentation. And uh, let's start. A bit about me. I mean, I joined Inobi uh, almost two years ago uh, as a sales engineer. I'm now a product manager, and I've been involved since the beginning into uh, mobile conversion tracking. So I've, I've seen the evolution of the, the mobile conversion tracking in the last couple of years. Uh, currently, I mean, my name is Francois, uh, but uh, it's a French name, but I'm currently uh, living in London. I'm French Canadian. And I've spent a lot of time in Bangalore, so I'm, I'm giving you this, uh, this presentation now from Bangalore. Um, and that's a picture of me trying to pimp it out uh, during Diwali last year. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get started. So <clears throat> today we'll be, we'll be talking about conversion tracking. We'll start with what is conversion tracking and why it is important on mobile. We'll uh, look at different tracking technologies uh, available, again, on mobile, uh, evaluate different, like, what are the different tracking pain points, uh, look at the different tracking solutions that uh, Inmobi uh, can provide, look at different case studies and how it works in practice, and then we'll finish with a few uh, best practices in terms of looking for your own tracking solution. So why or what is conversion tracking? It's basically uh, very simple. We want to be able to track how many conversions were generated by a specific uh, advertising campaign. Okay, so we are trying to link advertising spend with actual conversions, where conversions can be whatever the goal of the campaign is. It could be a download, it could be a purchase, it could be just an email sign up or anything. So whatever the goal of the campaign is, we want to be able to uh, associate it or link it back to an actual uh, ad campaign. So just to look at a different example I put on this slide, this would mean uh, answering the following questions, how many people saw your billboard and actually walked the 197 meters to eat at your restaurant? or how many people were injured on the, on the job I saw your TV ad and, and called your, your firm uh, to get advice on, on, on their injuries. And then uh, another example, how many people uh, saw your ad in a newspaper and, and really sent you a letter to receive your catalog or, and, and, and from the people who got your catalog, how many people actually bought one of your vehicles, right? So the reason why we want to associate conversions back to advertising spend is to make sure you're not or we're not wasting any advertising budgets. We want to make sure that, I mean, you guys will advertise on different channels, different, uh, you have different campaigns, and you want to make sure that each of them gets you the benefits or the, the returns you're, you're expecting. And if they don't, you'll, you'll change your, your strategy going forward. For instance, I mean, if uh, the billboard, uh, the McDonald billboard uh, example, if it costs $50 to, uh, per day to, to host it there, and only drive one customer a day, unless that customer eats a crap load of burgers every day, you might want to reconsider, right? You might want to go back to your, uh, to, to the, the supplier and, and either uh, reduce the, the costs or, or just go away with your billboard. <clears throat> so again, how do you want to, how do you do that uh, on, in practices? I mean, what you need to do is you want to link uh, two events together. The first event is uh, a, a person basically interacting with your advertising campaign and the second event is the same person uh, converting or purchasing uh, your, your product, right? So you want to link those two events together. Those two events are distant in, in space and, and time and you do that through a linking variables. And, and in the past, uh, marketers have been very creative in terms of uh, <clears throat> linking those two events and one common uh, use case is basically to the use of a uh, of a coupon with, a, with an ID in it, okay? So if each different coupons has a different ID per advertising channels or even per advertising campaign, once the coupons are redeemed in the store, you're able to look at the different IDs and, and, and know exactly how many conversions came from 
each of your campaigns, right? So by linking this variable, you're able to track a conversion back to your advertising spend and, and, and you're able to optimize your spend across different channels. This can be done from different other ways. You can do it with different addresses. You can do it with different phone numbers. If your users are coming from different phone numbers, you can associate them to different campaigns, uh, different promo codes, or more, uh, and then more simply, just by asking your users where they have uh, heard from your company. And basically, you can, knowing that information, you'll be able to optimize your campaigns and make sure that you spend your money uh, where you get the best returns. Okay. Uh, the thing on digital is we can go one step ahead of that, okay? So we can not only uh, track your uh, conversions back to specific advertising channels, we can go one step ahead and basically track the conversions back to a single impression. To a single, by a single impression, I mean to a single banner or a single rich media ad or whatever, uh, whatever you're using, but basically knowing uh, so attri sorry, attributing a conversions back to an impression allows us to know, uh, to know a lot more about the conversion because at the impression we know the, the page on which it was shown, we know the time of the day, we know the device, we know the OS, uh, the browser, browser version, we know so much about the, the impression that if we can uh, associate an impression to a conversion, we can start optimizing your campaigns based on so many more dimensions. Okay. Uh, all these dimensions that we know at impression time can be optimized in the targeting of your campaign and that can be done in real time. And it's even more powerful on mobile where an impression is not only attributed to a, a device but it can also attribute it to a, I mean, basically to a unique device or unique user uh, and also to, a, to an actual location in the map. So knowing all this information about the impression allows us to do a lot more uh, optimization. And we'll see, we'll have examples later in the presentation of how powerful this is to, to get this level of optimization. Uh, so basically, to uh, so tracking conversions on, on mobile will allow you to know exactly where your users and customers are coming from, understand what inventory segments are the most val valuable for your campaign, uh, optimize your spend to the most valuable inventory segments, and this can be done automatically and in, in real time. And to take a specific example, uh, so just we, so, so, so that we know what we're talking about, we'll, we'll focus on mobile going forward. Uh, but basically, this example is a very common example of, of mobile campaign where uh, it's a mobile app download uh, campaigns. So basically, we have an application called Path, which, which is um, a, a personal social, a social application, which is advertising on uh, Words with Friends, which is a game, uh, social game, right? So the user playing Words with Friends will see a, a banner ad at the bottom, at the bottom of the application uh, from the, the application paths and a very clear call to action, get the application. And, and, and by clicking on the, on the banner, the user will be redirected to the App Store where he can install the application, download the application, install it, and, and basically launch it for the first time. And once the application is launched, Path will see a new user in their user base, right? So now the, the, the trick is how can we associate the conversion, which is a download of the application and actually a launch of the application, uh, to the actual banner which appears on Words with Friends. And the challenge, I mean, the challenge is basically that only Words with Friends knows about the banner and knows about the user at time of, of click, and only Path knows about the conversion. And in the middle, there's actually an app, an app store which will not share any data with any of these two uh, other parties. So we need an actual integration between the publisher and the advertiser to be able to track a conversion back to a, to a click. And again, this is done through li uh, linking variables. And on mobile, there are different uh, type of technologies that will allow you to link an event, a conversion event, back to a, an impression or a click event. And those three buds of technologies are device IDs, uh, browser cookies, and device recognitions or device fingerprinting. And we'll go more in depth into those three different uh, types of technologies on, on, on mobile. And the first, the first one I'd like to talk about is device IDs. And I think this is probably one of the oldest forms of, of tracking on mobile. Uh, I think most of you will have heard of the UDID, uh, which is the unique device ID on iOS, uh, which, uh, which with an equivalent called the Android ID on Android OS. So those two IDs were the first ones used to track conversions on, on mobile. 
And the way they were used is basically we would ask all we will ask our publishers to send us all the click IDs, all the click UD IDs of all the people who have clicked on uh, on a banner, and then we will ask the advertiser to, to send us all the UD IDs of everyone who downloaded the apps uh, on a given day. And by cross-referencing those two lists, we were able to attribute conversions to actual clicks. Uh, same concepts as using, uh, let's say, less license plates, which are pretty unique per, per person. So if you want to know which uh, how many people basically traveled from San Francisco to LA you could potentially look at all the license plates in in San Francisco in the morning list them all on paper and then do the same thing in LA in the evening and by cross referencing the, the two lists you could uh, assess how many people traveled from point A to point B right so really using the device IDs and cross referencing them uh, allows us to to do that conversion tracking it, it acts as the uh, linking variable and the good thing with device IDs is that they have uh, very high accuracy. When they are available at click time, if we see the same device ID at, at conversion time, we're pretty sure it's the same person in both cases. So we can associate those two events with high confidence. And it's standardized in the sense that everybody in the industry would know about these different IDs and know how to uh, process them and, 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 and generate those IDs. Uh, one of the big problems of device IDs is basically the uh, the fact that they are not available on mobile web. They are only available in applications, meaning that we need, uh, meaning that you're blind to, to half of your inventory. Every click happening on browser webs, uh, on web browsers, sorry, will, will not be uh, trackable using this technology. Uh, so that's a first problem. So you're blind to a, a big share of your inventory. The second problem is that you will need, because those, those IDs are only available in the browser, uh, sorry, in the application, you will need very tight integrations with your publishers, uh, with your app developers, basically, to, so, so that they pass you those device IDs at click time. Okay, so that's another problem. And a second problem comes to the, f uh, the fragmentation issue of, the, of device IDs. Basically, you might know, in about a year ago, most of the, of the industry was relying solely on UD IDs on uh, iOS. And a year ago, Apple announced the deprecation of the, the UD ID. And at that point, many other d device IDs kind of popped in the, the ecosystem. The Odin one is one, which is an ID based on the MAC address of the phone. There was also the open UD ID and the secure UD ID. And all these other IDs kind of uh, started to be uh, in use. And the problem with having a fragmentation of IDs is basically if every single publisher uses a different ID, you will need to get all these IDs at, at download time or at conversion time to be able to track across all these publishers. So, that, so that it, it adds a few, uh, it adds a new integration challenge to be able to build up a supply of device IDs. Uh, the last idea I wanted to talk about is the IDA, which uh, is, uh, sorry, it's the Advertiser Identifier, which was launched with iOS 6 release last month. Uh, it's a mean to replace the UD ID and the Odin one on iOS, and it's a great thing to, that, will, that is happening to the ecosystem, but I think it's going to take a few more months for the supply base to be actually shifting from the ID and Odin 1 to the uh, IDA uh, ID. So for that to happen, you need every single phone, uh, iOS phones, to update to iOS 6. You need every single app to kind of push an update as well, which is iOS 6 compliant, and need every single user to update all these apps to iOS 6. So it's, it's going to take a few months to, for this to happen. I, I believe it will take at least six months uh, for, to, for us to have a, a good supply of IDA to be tracking properly on it. So hopefully Apple will uh, keep giving us access to the UDID and in one until that supply is, is uh, shifting to IDA completely. The second technology I want to talk about is the device, sorry, the, the cookie, uh, cookie based technology. Basically, being able to put a cookie uh, in the browser at click time and read the cookie again in the same browser at download or conversion time. Okay, so that's the, that's a, the, the type of technology to do tracking, uh, which was a bit problematic on, on mobile in the, um, oops, which was a bit problematic on mobile in the past when only feature phones were available, but which with most sm smartphones now, the, the, the support for cookies is quite, um, it's quite good now. <clears throat> the good thing with cookie is that we remove all need to integrate with our publishers or uh, with, with our app developers because what we do is we put the cookie at click time in the browser itself. So whatever happens before the click, we don't really care about. 
You can simply put the cookie at click time. We don't care if the inventory comes from mobile web or from application, etc. So we remove this whole integration part, which was a bit cumbersome. And secondly, uh, this also means we can track both in-app and, and mobile web uh, inventory. Okay, so that's a great uh, that's great advantages for, from the cookie uh, when we compare it to device IDs. It also provides a seamless tracking uh, experience on mobile web. But the big big problem with cookies it's when they are used to track on applications. So uh, sorry, when they're used to track application downloads. So when we track an application download using a cookie, uh, we need to read the cookie. We need to launch a browser uh, at first uh, at first application uh, initialization. So the first time the application is launched, uh, we need to launch a browser to be able to read the cookie, and that creates or that affects the user experience uh, at that single point of time. And and that was uh, seen as not really proper as a tracking solution on applications. So. Uh, that's one of the drawbacks of using uh, cookies to track app downloads. The second uh, problem or the second challenge with cookies is that they are not, uh, you cannot track a, across different browsers. So if a click or an impression happens in one browser and then um, the, the download or the conversion happens on a different browser, you will not be able to associate those two events. And the last thing is that uh, the accuracy on mobile, as compared to online, is not as it's not as good as what we were used to online. <clears throat> so it, it's a good way of tracking. It's probably not the best uh, tracking technology out there. Uh, and the last technology I wanted to talk about today is the device recognition or device fingerprinting technology. And this technology is basically uh, allows us to recognize devices using anonymous data points in the browser. And I'll give you an example of what I mean, uh, and then we can talk a bit more about the technology. But basically, what I, the example I like to use to kind of explain what is device recognition is the, the game Guess Who. So the game Guess Who is you play with, a, with, your, with your partner or your friends. They, they pick one of the characters without telling you which one it is. And then you ask a bunch of questions, uh, which each of these questions would not allow you to identify the character. But all of them together kind of leads you in the, in the right direction, right? So you, you'd say, okay, is this a male or female? Is he bald? Does he have a mustache, etc.? Each of these questions individually will not allow you to identify the character, but all of them together, you, you can be pretty certain that, okay, the character that was chosen is Max or Anita or Claire, etc. So device recognition acts on the same principle that each of the questions we ask about the device is anonymous in the sense that it's not based on device IDs or it's not based on anything that could identify the device with one question. We need to ask 20 to 30 different questions to be able to put an ID on the device. Okay, so we we look at different things like uh, the language settings of your browser, the browser uh, versions, the OS, the IP, uh, everything that is not anonymous in the browser will will we'll collect it and will crunch it and build an ID out of it. And from our experience, that provides us a, a much better accuracy uh, tracking in mobile than what cookies are providing, and also a better coverage in what device IDs are providing. Because we can track with this technology, we can track, again, on app inventory as well as on mobile web inventory. Uh, it doesn't affect at all the user experience okay, in the application or on mobile web. And because we can identify the device at click time as we do with cookies we don't need any integration with our publishers or app developers okay so we can we don't need any upstream integration uh, it's very easy to deploy this technology for tracking the problem or the the, the challenge with this technology is it's not uh, it's not a deterministic technology it's really a pro it's more of a probabilistic uh, technology uh, we're not we're never a hundred percent sure it's the same person. We are pretty sure it's the it's the same the same device, but we're not we're never a hundred percent sure. Uh, but at the same time, <clears throat> the fact that we're never a hundred percent sure it makes this technology uh, probably one of the best ones in terms of privacy compliance. So, so this this uh, this kind of uh, Negative point is acting as a positive point in the in the, in going forward when most of the uh, privacy compliance uh, bodies globally will start looking more into into tracking. I think device fingerprinting will become one of the technology, uh, the most liked technology. And I think I'm going to stop here for questions. In the middle, that's the middle of my presentation. So I'll stop for questions. And if you have any 
uh, questions, please type them in the Q&A box and Andy will, uh, will be asking them for you. Andy, do we have any questions at this point? Uh, yes, we do. We have one question from Roberto that's asking, um, are cookies only valid per browsing session on a mobile web? Uh, no, no, they are persistent. Uh, mobile web, we'll see that the, the cookies will be persistent be, uh, longer than just the browsing session. Okay. Uh, they're not as persistent as online. Okay, so the, the, the shelf life or the, the lifetime of a cookie is much lower on mobile than on online. I think the, the, the browsers on mobile are deleting cookies much faster than they do on, on online. But again, if we're talking about a, a conversion tracking use case, on Download tracking, we're looking at a window of maybe four to five days to track most of the conversions. Uh, some people will click and download uh, on one day and, but, and, and then open the, the application or launch the application uh, five days later. Uh, so four or five days is pretty much uh, how we need to track download conversions. So, and the cookie life is, is, is good enough for that. Uh, if we track mobile web conversions, so basically uh, if we track uh, let's say a campaign, uh, a lead generation campaign, the click and the download or the click and the conversion will probably happen in a matter of maybe 30 minutes, one hour, uh, one after the other, and they'll probably happen in the same browsing session. So uh, it's, it, it's a good, I mean, for the use case at, at, uh, that we're talking about now, which is conversion tracking, the cookie is a, is a good solution in the sense that the, the, the life of the cookie will be uh, long enough for us to use it. Great. Uh, another question we had was, um, why device IDs are not available on mobile web inventory? Okay. Uh, I mean, the device IDs, no, I mean, what, normally to have access to the UD ID or have access to the, uh, the MAC address that will allow you to build the Odin one or now the new IDA, you need to have uh, access to the, basically you need to have much deeper access to the operating system. Okay, so the browser doesn't have access to all the same uh, methods as an application has. The application has access to methods uh, that are way more deep or way more tight with the operating system. So that's why those, um, those IDs are only available in applications. So uh, no browser right now has access to these, uh, these information on the, uh, on the OS. Sure. Uh, another question was, do we need to install an SDK in the app for this IDA tracking? Uh, no, IDA tracking. You, I mean, basically, you will have access to the IDA if you have an. I mean, if you have an application, basically, you will not be able to track using IDA if you're tracking a mobile web campaign. But if you're tracking an application download campaign, you can uh, simply have access to the IDA through your application. Uh, and if you collect those those IDA on your server, you'll be able to track using IDAs, right? So there's no SDK required to track using IDA. All you need to do is collect those IDs as you would collect uh, UD IDs. It's the, same, it's the same approach. All right. Uh, let's see. Another question we had was, how accurate is this tracking compared to other online behavior? Like it, the, the question is, how is it compared to other tracking online? And I'm assuming this is mobile versus non-mobile tracking. Okay. Uh, it's a difficult question. I think uh, <clears throat> those are two, I mean, it's two different uh, systems. So it's very difficult to answer that question. I think uh, the accuracy, if we are able to track using device IDs, okay, so if we have the device IDs from uh, publishers at click time and the device IDs from advertisers at download or conversion time, the accuracy is 100%, right? There's no real doubts. In, I mean, it's not 100%, but it's going to be very, very high. It's going to be in the high 90%, right? It, it's going to be very easy to track conversions using device IDs. If we're looking at cookies, uh, I think the accuracy online is not, first the accuracy online using cookies is not 100%. It's probably, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's about 80%, maybe 85% tracking uh, conversions using cookies uh, online. We're seeing something between 70%, like around 70% using cookies uh, on mobile. So the accuracy is lower on mobile using cookies. But then when we talk about device recognition uh, technologies, we're on mobile, we're going up to probably 80 to 90 percent. So uh, it depends on the technology. Uh, I think online we were only using the cookies and we're reaching something like 80 percent. I think if we combine different technologies on mobile, we can reach the same level of accuracy on mobile. 
Great. We've got a ton of questions. We'll take two more and then let you continue. And for folks that don't get your questions answered uh, at this time, we'll uh, be sure we get those answered when we send out the recording and the transcript. Another question we had was, uh, some publishers prefer to use WebView to render landing pages. How does this affect cookie tracking for app download campaigns? Uh, it does affect uh, the, the app download tracking on, on, on cookies. So basically, if the, the browser if the browser at click time is different than the browser at download time, it will affect the, the accuracy. So basically, if you use a, a web view in the, in the publisher app, you will need to use a web view in the advertiser SDK to be able to read the same cookie. It's possible, uh, but, some, but most of the solutions out there to track with cookies will assume that the publisher doesn't use a web view. They'll assume that the publisher will launch the Safari browser. So in these cases, uh, you would not be able to track. But at, at the same time, uh, yeah, I think I think you need to uh, really look at what your publishers are going to use and use a, 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 a solution in your SDK that will map that. Uh, I would personally, I mean, I will we'll keep going in the discussion. I think I, I would personally not really recommend using cookies for app download tracking. Uh, we'll, we'll show a bit why, uh, what is better than using cookies uh, in the next uh, few slides. Uh, but yeah, so you need to be careful. There, there's a challenge there. If you don't use the same browser, they'll be, you'll, be, you'll be losing those conversions. Great. One more question, then we'll let you continue the, uh, the slides. Yeah. Uh, can device recognition be used for both mobile website pixel campaigns and for app download campaigns? Yes. Uh, so basically, device recognition. What we do is we, we read the we read the different parameters using a JavaScript uh, collector. Okay. So the JavaScript collector, we run it at click time. So whenever we receive a click, we will run the collector and we'll collect some data and identify the device. And then whenever the application uh, is launched for the first time, or SDK will go and and collect the same data to create an ID. Now, to be able to track these conversions on mobile web, so let's say you're talking about a lead generation campaign instead of an app download, we will need to run a Java or JavaScript collector in the in the let's say in the mobile web conversion page or when maybe the thank you page of your of your lead generation form. Uh, I think we're we're talking here about a JavaScript tag that will do that. We will not be able to track using image pixel with uh, so image pixel will not allow us to put uh, uh, to put our collector in the in the pixel, so we'll need to put a JavaScript tag at at time of conversion, and we'll be able to track even on mobile web. Cool. Excellent. Thanks. So let me let me continue. Uh, so again, if you need to drop off for any reasons, we are uh, recording this uh, this presentation, and we'll be sending it to you in the next uh, in the next few days. Okay. <clears throat> so with all the different technologies we've been talking about on mobile, so I think there's a lot of te different technologies. Why is mobile conversion tracking not mainstream? I think there's different reason why it's not been um, uh, adopted at at scale now, and and one of the few reasons is the fact that there's many many different providers of tracking technologies, and it's not always clear uh, what are the different capabilities of those different providers. Uh, certain will be based on uh, certain providers will use different type of technologies. Uh, Certain providers will, will, will use only one technology, certain will use multiple technologies, and as we've seen, all these different technologies will have benefits and limitations. And again, it's not clear uh, which providers use what. Uh, <clears throat> certain technologies will give us accuracy, certain technologies will give us uh, scale, and to get both accuracy and scale is very challenging at, at this point. Uh, and some other technologies will be uh, affecting the user experience in a negative way. So because of all these different things, it's, it, it's not uh, an easy problem to solve, right? Uh, in Mobi, uh, as an ad network, we've been dealing with tracking conversions for the last two to three years. Um, the reason why we're, using, uh, we're, we're investing in tracking is basically because we want to prove our advertisers that the campaigns they run on in Mobi have good performance. So by allowing uh, conversion tracking, we can say, hey, you spend that much money, uh, you got that many conversions, we have, we have a good performance, please uh, use us again. Uh, we also use conversion tracking to not only prove that we're giving good performance, but also 
optimize the performance. If we can, as I explained earlier, if we can take a conversion associated to the impression, we can uh, start optimizing on many, many dimensions. So anyway, we've, we have a lot of experience with conversion tracking, and we have launched um, a few months ago in May this year a new tracking solution called Inmobi Ad Tracker. The tracking solution was originally based on a cookie base, uh, a cookie technology. So we're tracking using cookies. And in the summer, we partner with a company called AdTruth, which is a device recognition uh, provider. Okay, they're based in San Francisco. We have licensed their technology and integrated it into our Inmobi Ad Tracker platform. And we relaunched it in, uh, in September. Uh, we relaunched Inmobi Ad Tracker in September with this new uh, device fingerprinting technology. Now, Inmobi Ad Tracker, uh, we launched it as an independent platform than our Inmobi uh, Ad Network. So it's independent from the Ad Network. Using the Ad True technology, we are able we are able to track on mobile app inventory as well as on mobile web inventory. We can track any types of conversions, be it the download, the purchase, the uh, lead generation or email sign up, whatever you want to track from your mobile campaigns, we can track it. Uh, and we track it in real time without affecting the user experience. Okay? <clears throat> and the good thing is we are allowing or we are giving this solution to all app developers uh, for free. Okay, so we have this solution now that we launched. Uh, <clears throat> and the one thing I want to focus on is the fact that because we launched it and because we use AdTrue device technology, we're not we don't need to integrate with any ad channels to be able to track on, on, on their inventory. So we can track across all different publishers or ad networks without any integration. And if, if these ad networks are interested to, to optimize your campaigns at the impression level, we'll be more than happy to ping them back the, the conversions we track and attribute it to those networks, and they will be able to uh, optimize your, network, uh, your campaigns at the impression level. Uh, we're supporting all the technologies we've been talking uh, so far. So we're talking about, uh, we're supporting device recognition, IDs, uh, and cookies. Uh, and if we go uh, for each, uh, each of the, the lines of, the, uh, of this graph, basically on iOS, we'll, we, are based on, uh, at, we are based mainly on attribute device recognition. Okay, so we use it as a main technology. But we will also use different device IDs when they are available at click time. So the idea I spoke about is a new iOS 6 ID. Uh, we are still supporting Odin ones and UD IDs, okay, and we will keep supporting them until Apple uh, remove, completely remove the access, or until there's, since, until there's no more inventory uh, on those two IDs, okay? So when, once we don't have any more inventory using these IDs, there's no more uh, reason to use them for tracking, right? So we'll, we'll keep using them as, as long as we, we need to. On Android, again, AdTruth is our main technology of tracking. We're also using the Odin one uh, and the Android ID. And as you can see on applications, we're not using cookies anymore. So we removed the cookie completely from our tracking solutions, mainly because of the, of the negative user experience that cookies were bringing uh, at, <coughs> at when the application had to be launched, right? However, on web, we are still using cookies because on web there's no problem using cookies. We we still there, there's no effect on the user experience and uh, and because the click normally happens uh, in the same browser as the conversion, we are able to track uh, mobile web conversions using cookies without any problem. We will soon be adding our add to technology in our mobile mobile web uh, solutions. By soon, I mean by the end of this year, and as soon as uh, Microsoft released the new Windows Phone 8. Uh, <clears throat> applications will be releasing uh, a new SDK or technology to be tra to be able to track Windows Phone 8 uh, app downloads. This will probably be, I mean, from our initial uh, investigation, it will probably be based on an AdTruth ID, unless uh, Microsoft give us access to a device ID. In this case, we'll use both AdTruth and the device ID. So that's the technology we launched this year. Uh, we'll, let's go to a quick, quick use case in terms of how does it work. Uh, basically, same use case, we have a, an application download campaign running a, ban a banner into a, a different property or different publishers, and the user will see and, and click on the banner. At time of click, in Mobi Ad Tracker, will read different parameters on the device and send those to AdTruth. AdTruth will process those parameters and send back a, what they call a device inside ID to InMobi 
a tracker. Uh, let's call it a, a natural ID, and we'll, we'll store this ID in our database. Then we redirect the user back to the, or not back, but forward to the, to the App Store, where the user will download the application, install it, and ultimately launch, launch it. Once the application is launched, our SDK is installed in the application, and we will basically read the same parameters and send them to Attrude. Attrude will send us a device inside ID back. We'll check in our database if there's a match between the click event and the download event. And if there's a conversion, we'll track it, and we will ping back the ad network who generated this conversion so they can optimize the conversion. So again, in Mobia Tracker is a pure tracking solution. Mobia Tracker will not do any optimization, but we will enable ad networks and other publishers to do optimization at the impression level if we do a small integration with them. So again, we can use the Mobia Tracker to track across multiple networks, but let's look at how it would look like if you use only one ad network. So you start uh, and you come and you uh, register an account within Mobia Tracker and you register your application or your site with us. We will give you either an SDK to integrate in your application or JavaScript tags if you're talking about a mobile web application, a mobile web campaign. Uh, you integrate those different SDKs and JavaScript tags. Once you're done with the integration, you come back to us and you say, hey, I want to run my campaign across those three networks, network, network A, B, and C. We'll give you three different tracking URLs, one for network A and one for network B, one for network C. Once you, when you create your different campaigns in those other networks, you use the A, B, and C tracking URLs, and the campaign will be starting uh, or be launched on our side, we will collect the clicks on three different channels. We'll see the clicks coming from tracking URL A, B, and C. We'll be able to assign every click to a specific ad network you are running on. And once the conversion starts to be tracked, we'll basically be able to track a conversion back to a click and then back to an ad network. And if those ad networks are integrated with us, we'll be even pinging those ad networks back with their conversions so they can optimize your campaign in real time. Let's look at a few case studies we've, uh, we've seen uh, over the summer. So we will look into a lead generation case study, so a mobile web campaign uh, using Immobia Tracker uh, to track conversions. We'll look at the app download tracking case study, and we'll also look at the cross-promotional uh, case study. The first one I want to look at is uh, a campaign we ran over the summer, which ob the objective of the campaign was to generate leads for s uh, free SIM cards for one operator. And the target per sign up was around $70, and the budget of the campaign was about $10,000. So, what we did is we integrated InMobi Ad Tracker into the, the landing page of the campaign. So, into the, the, actually the conversion page of the campaign. We put a small JavaScript tag in the, in the confirmation or thank you page after the, the user basically filled the form I want this free SIM cards. Here are my coordinates. Here's me, my uh, email address. Press submit. The next page is thank you for submitting your form. We put a small JavaScript tag there, uh, which was feeding back conversions back to uh, Immobi Ad Tracker. Okay, so we run the campaign for six weeks, as you can see on the graph, uh, the <clears throat> in the lower graph. We run it for six weeks, but in the first two weeks, while we were tracking with Immobi Ad Tracker, the feedback loop were, was not running. So basically, there was no feedback loop, and the optimization of the ad the ad serving was not running at that point. So you see, even if we were attributing leads to InMobi ad network, the cost per lead was quite quite high. As soon as we enabled the feedback loop, so as soon as InMobi took that feedback and started to optimize uh, the campaign, we saw the cost per lead going dramatically down from uh, the, the peak of 131 uh, and as low as $24 on week five. Okay, so using the feedback loop enabled us to not only track the campaign, but also optimize the campaign way below the target CPI. Okay, so one point I want to make very clear here is it's not just good to track conversions back to an ad channel. You need to be able to uh, let this ad channel optimize at the conversion level to really get the maximum out of a campaign and get the maximum return out of a campaign. The second case study I'd like to talk about is the app download uh, tracking case study. Uh, here we're talking about an Android game, which was about more than four stars on Google Play. The target of the of the campaign was to get downloads at $1.5 uh, cost per download 
or CPD, but the daily budget was around thousand dollars, and we ran the campaign on, in the U.S., in the U.K., in Canada, and in Australia. And after two weeks, we were able to reach the the target CPD of about one point four dollars, and a campaign that spent a little less than what the the goal was around ten thousand dollars. But there's two key learnings that I want you to um, uh, to remember from this use case. Basically, the first one is the learning period at the beginning of the campaign. If you look at the black uh, line, which is a daily spend, when we start a campaign, basically we don't know where is the good inventory for this campaign and where is the bad inventory. So we start very slowly to spend a bit on every single inventory segment that we know uh, or that we have in our inventory site. And we start learning about where where are the users that are uh, positive for this campaign? Where are the users that convert very well for this campaign, basically? And, and as soon as we know more about the campaign, we start spending more on the good segments and, and spending less on the bad segments. And as you can see, the the spend of the campaign goes up and up and up in the, in the first five days, while the cost per download goes down until we reach a steady state where we we achieve the target CPD. Okay. And the second learning is the fact that we, once we achieve this, the target CPD, no matter how much, um, so we'll, we'll the, the, sorry, the priority of our tracking or optimization loop is really to aim on a CPD, not really to aim on the burn. If we don't have enough inventory for any g given reason to achieve the target CPD and the daily, uh, the daily spend, we will reduce the, 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 the daily spend to make sure that we are achieving the, 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 the cost, per, cost per download. Okay, so in this case, you see that there's a, a drop in the middle of the campaign. This drop could be due because there's a different, another burst campaign at the same time, which is taking the same inventory, or maybe there was a drop of inventory of some sort. But the, the point is, even if the inventory drops, we'll not start spending on the bad inventory uh, just to burn the campaign. We'll basically make sure that the only we spend only on the good inventory and maintain the cost per download stable. And one last uh, use case on a, on a cross-promotional uh, use case. Uh, this one is, uh, is from Outfit7. Uh, Outfit7 is a global game studio behind the Talking Friends mobile apps. I don't know if you know those guys. Uh, for their latest app, which is Talking Ginger, Outfit7 used uh, InMobi Ad Tracker to track the performance of their different cross-promotions and also with, uh, to track the, the performance of their affiliate campaigns. So here we're not talking about an application that was spending on InMobi. It's really an application that was um, running a campaign across different direct publishers. So InMobi Ad Network is not involved in this in this use case. So because InMobi Ad Tracker is leveraging uh, AppTruth's device recognition technology, Outfit7 was able to track the performance of their campaigns with a simple SDK integration in the application. So they, they, they didn't have to integrate with any of their direct publishers. Only the SDK in their own application was sufficient to track the performance of their campaigns, that allowed them to optimize the performance of their cross promotions and affiliate campaigns. Okay, so I just wanted to give you one example of a of a, of a case study where uh, the InMobi ad network was not involved. The thing is, in this case, we're talking about a pure channel uh, attribution. Uh, there's no real uh, and the, sorry, there's no real optimization at the impression time. Okay, which is one of the other benefits of tracking using ad tracking. So I think I've talked a lot about InMobi Ad Tracker. I think I'm a bit biased because that's my area of focus in the uh, at InMobi. <clears throat> but I want to make sure that I mean I know that there's many other tracking solutions out there. Some of them are very good. So I'm not going to say InMobi Ad Tracker is the only tracking solution. But I want to leave you on, on a few pointers on what to look for when you choose a tracking solution. Okay. And the first thing uh, I really want to point out is you should be looking at not only tracking your different uh, Ad channels or attribution sources. You should look at tracking what exact impression or what exact click generated which conversion, and and this would allow you, or allow your publishers or your ad networks to really optimize at the impression level. So when you, you choose a tracking solution, make sure that this tracking solution will enable uh, a big majority of your publishers and ad networks to optimize your campaigns. Because you have you seen on the on the mobile web uh, case study. You can get a lot of uh, a lot of value out if you can track at the at an impression level. The second thing I want to uh, you to remember different technologies. Some of them have good accuracy. Some of them have good coverage. All of them have limitations. Okay, so a, a tracking platform or a tracking solution really needs to leverage more than one technology. If you want to 
uh, track with accuracy at scale, you'll have to, to leverage different technologies at the same time. So I think once you choose a tracking solution, you should make sure that there's a, a good mix of technologies out there so that you don't, uh, you're not affected too much by any of the limitations of these technologies. And the last thing I want to point out is the fact that tracking might affect the, the, the user experience. Okay, so remember that a cookie-based approach will always open a browser at the first application launch. Okay, so if you're the tracking solutions you're considering uses cookies uh, to track app downloads, I would I would suggest you to just go and ask the the, the, the solution or ask the the, the, the platform uses their solution, download them and open them for the first time and see if the user experience is something that you would be ready to have in your own application, right? And the second thing about the user experience is more at the click time. So if you put the tracking URL between the click and the app store, you will add a certain level of latency that you add a maybe one or two seconds of latency in the, in the click path. So I would not recommend you using more than one or maximum two different tracking solutions in parallel because each of these tracking solution will add a bit of latency between the click and the and the and the app store and and might if you have ten different tracking solutions at the same time you might uh, reduce the performance of your campaign altogether. Okay, so that's it for uh, uh, <clears throat> so I mean we've discussed how to track mobile conversions and optimize mobile campaigns at the impression level, right? So one of the next challenges, I believe, in mobile conversion tracking will be how we can optimize on real-world conversions. And I think there's already a few uh, solutions out there that will allow us to track uh, and optimize on real-world conversions. And an example of provider is a company called Sparkfly. Uh, Sparkfly is integrated with many point of sales of many, many different stores in the US, okay? And I'll give you an example of how an Inmobi campaign uh, track using Sparkfly could look like. So basically, uh, Inmobi would be serving an ad with a, a specific deal in the in the banner, right? The customer would click on the ad and would be taken to a landing page with the offer to be redeemed. The offer would, would be including a unique uh, ID or a unique code which would be associated to Inmobi. Now, if the user or the customer goes physically into one of the stores, which is part of the offer, and basically redeem the offer by presenting the code to the cashier. The cashier can enter the code in the system, uh, and because the system is integrated with Sparkfly, Sparkfly will be able to attribute the purchase to Inmobi. So that would allow you to basically track real real world conversions back to uh, different campaigns. And if you can go one step further, if you can start generating unique redeemable coupons for each impression. This would allow you to do an impression-wise optimization on real-world conversions, okay? Uh, and that's exact. That's where the value would be going forward. And I believe this would be facilitated by by platform uh, platforms such as Passbook, where each coupon or vouchers uh, that are generated can be presented represented by a QR code. So if, if each QR code is associated to a single impressions in the system, you can track a conversion, a real-world conversion back to an actual impression and do impression level optimization. And I think that very soon we'll, we'll see those redeemable coupons uh, in, in more and more campaigns going forward. And that's the end of my presentation on mobile uh, conversion tracking. I'll reopen the floor for uh, Q&A. I think uh, Andy will again uh, be reading your questions. So if you have any questions, please read, uh, put them in the Q&A box. Yeah, one question we had was how does this solution uh, different to AdX? Uh, my understanding is that AdX is uh, is leveraging mostly co browser cookies. Okay, so they'll probably. I mean, I'm not. I'm not gonna say I'm 100% sure of that, but I think AdX is using browser cookies as well as device IDs to track uh, your downloads. So I think one of the, the I think there's two advantages of Inmobi Ad Tracker in that, in that regard would be, first, because we're not using cookies, our solution to track downloads would not affect the user experience. And the second, um, second advantage is that we have a free solution. I think AdX is a, is a paying solution. Great. Another question was, uh, are, is the tracking um, URLs you give uh, per network, per banner level, or, or just at the network level? Okay, so I mean the easiest is to do it at the network level, but we have one more level of uh, granularity. So if you want to do it at 
if, for instance, you run one campaign on one network, uh, sorry, if you run, you run a multiple campaigns on one network, so if you have network A with campaign one, two, three, we'll be giving you three different URLs for your different uh, campaigns. So we can do it as, we basically will generate as many tracking URLs as you need to, to get the granularity that you want. Great. Uh, one question is, uh, if the app developer wants to promote their app through them, and they use in Mobi ad tracker service. Should the app embed ad tracker SDK first for tracking that conversion? Um, can you repeat that, Andy? I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, this is from a ad network that serves China, and they're saying okay. if we have an app developer that wants to promote their app through us, and we use in Mobi ad tracker service, should the developer's app embed the ad tracker SDK first? I think it's how do you hook up the network to this SDK. Okay, so what we'll do, I mean, if, if uh, the first, the, the application will need to put the Inmobi Ad Tracker SDK, that's the first thing, uh, and without any further integration, we would be able to track conversion on that third party and network. So we can track conversions no problem on that third party and network. Now the question is, if that other ad network wants to optimize the campaign, We'll need uh, an extra integration with um, with that ad network, so that for every single conversion we attribute back to that uh, to that source, we will be pinging back the ad network. So basically, if if there's an interest there, I would suggest that you get in touch with me directly, and we'll see how we can integrate the uh, your ad network into our platform and allow your uh, your campaigns or your users to be able to uh, track conversions using in more be a tracker and then enable the optimization at the impression level. So I think it's a, it's a, it's absolutely feasible. First step is probably an integration with the application and second step is an, integ an integration with the, the end network itself. Great. Another question was about how does the geotargeting fit into all of this uh, depending on you know who you're trying to reach and what networks you're running on? So I think I think the tracking and the targeting is two different things, right? So in Mobile Tracker, we do the tracking. Okay, we'll make sure that every single impression uh, that is served on your campaign, we can uh, we can tell you if that impression led to a conversion, yes or no. Now, the targeting is normally done at a different level. It's normally done by the ad server or the ad networks themselves, uh, and it's mainly based on your uh, on your decision. If you want to target a specific geolocation you will need to create your campaign in this specific ad net, in, in your ad networks and tell them, look, I want to only target uh, Bangalore. I want to only target this specific area. And the ad network will be responsible of making your targeting work. What I think could happen is if InMobi Ad Tracker uh, tracks your campaigns and sends back the conversions back to the ad network, and the ad network figures out, oh, this campaign converts very, good, very well in these different locations, is the ad network's responsibility to adapt your targeting automatically and, and, and optimize your campaign, right? So, yeah. So I think I think it's two different use cases. You, you'll do your targeting on the ad network uh, piece. You'll do your tracking with Immobile Ad Tracker, and the ad net based on where your conversions are coming from, you'll be able, able to either optimize your campaign manually, or if the the network allows it, they'll optimize your campaign uh, automatically and they start putting more of your impressions in certain areas. Great, we'll do one more question and then we can go ahead and sign off. And a reminder folks, we'll be sending out the recording and the slides for this probably in the next day and a half or so. So we'll get that out to you as soon as we can. Uh, final question is how does pixel tracking fit into all of this? Yep, so pixel tracking is basically, uh, if I understand well, is on, on mobile web. So we don't really support pixel tracking for uh, app downloads, but if we're talking about a lead generation campaign, uh, we could put a pixel, an image pixel uh, in the, uh, the confirmation page or the thank you page to be able to track that conversion, right? The pixel tracking, the thing, the, the way it works, it's, it's solely working. I mean, first you will not have access to any device IDs because you are on a mobile web browser. Uh, so no device IDs will be uh, available. You would only be able to track using cookies with pixel tracking. So it's, it's, it's possible, we already support uh, pixel tracking uh, or image pixel tracking on mobile web right now with NMOBI Ad Tracker. Uh, the, for me, the limitation is you're, you're limited to one technology. You're limited to cookies to be able to track your conversions. While we know that uh, 
we might have uh, there, there will be an uplift in conversion accuracy or tracking accuracy if you use, if you use both cookies and uh, at root IDs or device recognition. So the the next the next uh, technology or the next option to integrate with us that we'll be releasing this year is basically a JavaScript tag that is used to track on mobile web using both cookies and device recognition. And I think that will have the advantage of having a better tracking accuracy than just using the image pixel. But it's possible. It's all it's all possible. But you're limiting you're limiting yourself to only one technology when tracking with image pixel. That's it. Okay, so that's that's it for me today. Uh, as Andy said, we'll be sending you the uh, the recording later this week or early next week. Uh, if you have questions or you want more information about Immobia Tracker, feel free to visit the site which is uh, shown there, which is uh, www.immobia.com forward slash tracker. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, to get in touch with me at francois.deschain at Thank you, guys. Thank you, folks.